This week is the week. It's the week I've been waiting for to bring my submarine in the garage. First, we need to move some things out of the way. We got a lot of docks here at my boat rental business. That's where I keep this. So that way all the tourists visiting the area can come and see it. Oh yeah. Woo. It's about 34 degrees outside. It's really cold and we need to get in a nice warm garage. Oh yeah. We got skid steer today. I feel like I'm talking like I'm living in Florida or something. I got that slang. Now we can get the submarine out to the garage and start working on it. Oh yeah, baby. Let's go. Man, the stuff I do for YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. You might recognize this field from the airplane cornhole trailer video that we're going to be shooting in the springtime. We are at the garage. And I'm ready to get out of this rain. We got it in. We're going to be able to let this dry off. I'm going to go over a lot of the components on the submarine. I'm going to show you guys exactly how it works and tell you what we're going to be doing this week. First, let's get that heat turned on in here. We're going to let it warm up. Finally got the temperature turned up in here. It's about 60 degrees right now. We're going to be repainting the interior of the submarine. It's pretty rough right now. A lot of surface corrosion from the humidity that gets trapped inside. Got a solution for that that I'm going to be implementing so that way it doesn't get corroded again and I don't have to paint it every two years because steel is steel and it's going to corrode. Same thing with the exterior. I repaint the exterior every two years. This was painted last year. So next season I'll repaint the exterior or maybe just do a little bit of touch up so that way it looks nice for the summertime. But you're going to see it looking pretty ugly right now. So I'm going to take you around the submarine, show you just how dirty it is. These are the dive planes. What do the dive planes do? They allow the submarine to control its depth underwater. This submarine does not have a variable ballast tank, so it is not designed to hover. It has to be moving at speed to use the water going over the dive planes and these motors and these hitch with the dive planes. So the dive planes are effective, but its primary purpose was just for badassness because it looks really cool. Uh, this would look terrible without the dive planes, honestly, but they do work in conjunction with the motors. Now, the submarine is driving, the water is flowing over the dive planes, and the thrusters are pushing the water this way. If you want to submerge lower, this will rotate this direction along with the thruster, and that will direct water flow up pushing the nose down and pulling it deeper. Same thing with pulling it to a shallower, shallower depth. And then you just find a sweet spot and you can, you can cruise at a set depth. What are these things? Um, a lot of people don't know what this is. They, they mistake this for a ballast tank. It is not. Uh, it is simply full of air. It is some thick PVC pipe. Uh, we did pressure test this uh, with external pressure pushing in. We simulated it. Uh, this will go double the depth of the submarine before this were to implode. So this, I'm not worried about. Before I get carried away, what does this actually do? It provides surface stability. So when you're looking at the front of the submarine, there's one on each side. Now, when it's sitting on the surface, it rocks pretty easy with the waves. In the early surface trials of the submarine, I did not like that. So I added those. Now, ballast tanks. Yep, it looks pretty dirty. It's pretty grimy. This valve on the outside, this is so that way I can submerge the sub from the outside. I don't have to be inside it. So each ballast tank has one of these. There's one on this side for the main ballast tanks. And then there's another one on the other side. And then there's one for the fore and aft. So this one's for the aft. If I were to open this valve, that would flood the aft ballast tank, submerging the rear end underwater. And uh, you have absolute control. Uh, you can use a scuba tank from the exterior and pump air into, into each individual section uh, to bring it to the surface. So if there was an underwater emergency, uh, a scuba diver 
present could surface it from the outside. Now that this is a uh, freshwater submarine, this doesn't go in the ocean. It's not designed to go at depths greater of 60 feet underwater. So no, this is not the submarine you would use to try to go see the Titanic. Uh, it is a freshwater, shallow water submarine. So it's really safe in the sense that uh, you're not dealing with extreme pressures. It's really dirty over here. You can see all the leaves and, and rust and corrosion. So it's definitely gonna need to do a little bit of painting on the exterior, maybe in the springtime. You see this pipe right here that's sticking out the side? That connects to the bottom end of the four ballast tank. Now the front and the aft ballast tanks are closed tanks. So regardless of your depth underwater, uh, the air volume inside of these tanks can't be compressed. Uh, so they cannot change in buoyancy once they're sealed because there's a valve that closes off the top and the bottom of these tanks. Whereas the ballast tanks on the side are open on the bottom. So once you open that valve on the top, all of the water rushes in and all the air escapes and that's completely flooded. So I'm able to control the trim using the four and F ballast tanks. And that's all we need in order to do that. This is how I get up it. I just step up here on the ramp on the trailer and step up on the beam or just step right onto that pipe because that pipe's really strong. And some of you have asked, what's the submarine's name? It's SS1, that's simple. I know, it should be something maybe cooler. Drop your ideas in there, what you think a name would be, other than Titan 2, that one's not funny. So there's the inside today, looking really rough. There's stuff scattered all over. Let's hop in there. We'll just show you what we got and how the interior works. Oh yeah, it smells like rust. We got all these labeled for quick reference because there are so many valves. One, two, three, four. <laughs> five, six, seven valves, eight, nine, ten. So this is the aft bottom. So this seals off the lower end of the aft ballast tank. Once I get it trimmed where I want it, I will close this valve. I leave them all open during the winter time because we do fill these with antifreeze. This is the control panel. Look at how bad that looks right now. That is just from one year of humidity. The problem with the humidity inside the submarine is something that I, I don't know why I did not think of a solution to that because I didn't think it would be as bad as it is, but it's bad. Uh, when you open the hatch during the summertime, there's just puddles of water in here from the condensation. And that's why everything in here is, is such high maintenance. Uh, it, it requires a ton of cleaning and painting and I'm going to take you along this week on this video, guys. You're going to see that this week. We're going to start painting the inside of this and I'll go into more detail and everything. But a uh, solution for it is I'm going to put an inline fan on the flood valve. Uh, so we'll leave the flood valve open uh, and I'll install a second flood valve. So we're going to have two flood valves on the hull of the submarine, right? And the flood valve is what you use for people that don't know a flood valve in a submarine is for emergencies only it's if you are trapped at the bottom and you can't get to the surface in order to get out of the submarine you have to equalize the pressure and flood the inside of it uh, now that sounds scary and it's a little scary sure but Again, remember, the submarine only goes to 60 feet underwater, which is the recreational scuba diving limit. And I've, I've scuba dived to 60 feet before, and it's not that bad. So if you are at a depth of 60 feet and you have scuba gear inside the submarine, which we do, which I do when, when I dive, uh, and, I, and I did have to flood the submarine, that would be uh, an important step to escape because that hatch is, has tens of thousands of pounds of pressure of water on top of it. So you're not pushing it open. Even when you undo the clamps, you have to flood the sub and equalize that pressure. And while the submarine's flooding, put your scuba gear on, pressure equalizes, you open the hatch, you swim to the surface. So it'd be a lot different if you were in the ocean, hundreds of feet or thousands of feet underwater, you know, that would not be possible. You would die. There, there'd be no way out. So that's what makes the sub so much safer than ocean submersibles in the sense of escaping you, that that's not really an option uh, in, in an ocean submarine. 
or submersible, which is just not. Now that you know how flooding the submarine works, I can explain how I'm gonna use those flood valves to keep the humidity from getting bad in here while it's on land. When the submarine is on land, I will open those flood valves and I will put an inline fan on them that will pull air into the sub and then uh, another fan that sucks air out. So there's always circulating air and we'll just plug it into an outlet and just run it all summer long. That way I don't have to worry about the humidity building up in here and my control board looking like that. And yes, to all the people asking if it has an Xbox controller, it does not. It has an actual joystick, uh, an actual controls for the individual motors. Big, bulky, lots of wiring. An Xbox controller would actually probably be better, but uh, you have an LCD display, which is probably broken right now based on the water and everything that's on it. So we'll probably replace that. The fans, interior LCDs and cameras, the CO2 scrubber, which the CO2 scrubber uses this stuff. Now this one was already used partially. Um, it's called softener line. And this absorbs CO2 from the cabin. Uh, and you just replenish that uh, the, the CO2 that's absorbed by this with uh, oxygen. That's in short how uh, you scrub CO2 out. Some of you ask if it's claustrophobic in here. It's not, there's actually a lot of space. Like if you were to compare the size of the hull of this submarine compared to like a K350 or K250, if you want Google it, it's just Kedridge uh, submarines K250 or K350. Uh, you can find videos of people inside of those things, and they're a lot smaller than this. So if you want to breathe a little bit, this submarine is better for that. The level gauge senior. It's a pretty simple gauge, but it tells me what my trim is, so that way I can trim it out. Cabin pressure gauge, CO2 meter. This is nasty. It's crazy what, hu what the humidity can do inside the submarine. It looks like this thing has been abandoned for 10 years. It's crazy. Um, so I'm really hoping that the new solution that I have for keeping the humidity out of it will greatly decrease the maintenance that I have to do on the inside of the sub. Some of you might be wondering how the hatches work. So let's close it up. So the hatch is closed and um, just like the K250 submersibles, you have these J hooks and uh, that just slides over there. Loosen that up. And that goes under there like that. And then you just tighten it up. I'm not gonna do that right now. But you just tighten that up. There's four of them all around the hatch. You tighten that up, you look through there, you make sure there's no air gaps in the ring and you're good to go. These hatches are like, I don't know, 200 pounds probably. Yeah, opening and closing, it would be a nightmare without the hydraulics or the gas pistons. See that big piece of concrete? That was essential to getting this, the trim of the submarine perfect. Man, this thing looks like it's been abandoned for a long time, huh? Take a look at that view. That's what you see when you're sitting on the surface looking forward. Make sure you like and subscribe because in a few days we'll be filming the next video of repainting the interior. So I built this submarine to be extremely safe. Other than the fact that it only goes in shallow fresh water, it has three separate redundant air lines to the ballast tank. So even if one of those lines were to burst or fail, you only need to be able to fill one ballast tank up with air to get it to the surface. So all three of them would have to fail one after another. If everything else goes wrong on top of that, you have the option to flood the inside of the sub and swim up to the surface. So yes, I know a lot of you guys love this kind of stuff, but there's also a good handful of you that think I'm gonna kill myself or something. But let me tell you something for you assume things. Um, very knowledgeable in this field and I uh, worked with a ton of companies, engineering firms to design this thing. It is a whole different level of risk when you're diving shallow water versus going out in the ocean. So it's not really in the same category. And if you want to learn about how I actually built it, I have a video on my channel. One of the oldest videos that kind of kickstarted this channel was how I built a homemade submarine. So uh, I'll drop that link in the description. If you enjoy this stuff, if, you, if you're a hardcore ultimate DIYer willing to learn and spend years researching and building something, you learn a lot in that process. So this wasn't just a thrown together cob job. This uh, cost $28,000 to build 
with all the parts and fixes and, and uh, adjustments to get this thing working flawlessly underwater. So thank you very much, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. But for those of you that still think that I'm gonna die, well, subscribe because you can be part of history.